Revenger. I want to talk a little bit about our revenger. Our revenger only in a good sense. Our Father is our revenger. In as much as those that come against us, He fixes, okay? He takes care of business. It is written, it is documented, and so it is. Now, we're going to open our Bibles to the 10th chapter of Hebrews here in a moment, and so that you understand the very first verse, you got to know there was an earth age before this one. That's why that science is not incorrect when we find articles and, uh, and uh, artifacts that are millions of years old. Why? Because the earth is millions of years old, and the Bible declares it if you know how to read it. Most people don't. That's their problem. But the people that were chosen in the first earth age before what is called the catabo, the overthrow, when Satan rebelled, third of God's children went with him. And God, rather than destroying his children, sent it Satan and destroyed that first earth age and brought this one into being where each would be born to woman innocent to make his or her mind up whether they wanted to serve God or nobody. That's up to you. Your ship, you sail it, you'll never get any complaint from a good Christian. You want to go on the rocks? Hey, have a good trip. No problem. Now, uh, so God did choose certain, and only those elect are spoken of in this first verse. It applies to no one else. Non-believers doesn't apply. But once the elect know that the false Messiah comes first, if they give that over and will not go against him, that's unforgivable. And that's what chapter 10 in this book of Hebrews stipulates. Uh, but uh, knowing uh, one of God's elect and that wisdom, you don't have anything to worry about. Why? Our Father loves us. He cares for us, and as any father cares for a child, he's going to look out for you. He's not going to put up with nonsense, okay? If you love him. So, let's pick it up, if we may, with chapter 10 in the great book of Hebrews. Let's uh, go with verse 26. For if we sin willfully after, okay, I want you to underline after in your mind, that we have received the knowledge of the truth, meaning the first earth age, knowing who we are, and as it's written in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, you were chosen before the foundations of this world. Why? Because you stood there, and you know you have a destiny and a purpose. Okay? There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. In other words, once you have the truth, and you know, as it's written in Luke chapter 10, verse 12, when you're delivered before the false Messiah, if you do not stand with the Holy Spirit, that's unforgivable. Again, that doesn't apply to a non-believer. That's only to God's elect, okay? because you know better. Okay, verse 27, But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. Now, did it say those that love him or those that try to be decent? No, it said adversaries. That's people that actually go against God. In, in uh, the second, chapter, second book of Peter, in chapter 3, it makes very clear there in the beginning, there are people who are going to say, it's not going to happen, it's the same as it's always been, everything's this day, that day, on and on. And they are ignorant of the fact that the day of the, there were three days. The first was three ages, rather. The first was destroyed. It wasn't Noah's flood. It was the overthrow when the first earth age ended. And then that fiery indignation the Greek word is stanchi on. The, only the rudiments, only the elements are destroyed. That means that that is negative or that that is against God. If you're for God and if you love Him, you've got nothing to worry about. You know something? He's not angry at you. And He is, uh, and vengeance does belong to Him. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That, that's what the law was at that time, okay? 29. Or how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be through though thought worthy, who, shall, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted 
the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace. Well, what's the spirit of grace? It's the Holy Spirit, of course. Refusing the Holy Spirit to speak through you as it's written in Mark chapter 13 at that false delivery when the false one is here. So um, naturally, that's unpardonable. As, again, as it's written, I'll repeat in Luke chapter 10, verse 12. I'm sorry, reverse that, chapter 12, verse 10 in Luke. It's unpardonable, unforgivable. Why? Because you know better. And God expects, you know, if a person's ignorant, there's ignorant. And there's a little slack cut there. But if you know better, then that's a different story. God expects obedience. And he expects you to love him. Why? Because he blesses you with knowledge and truth. And the fact that he is, um, he is the one who will take vengeance on anything that comes against you that you can't handle yourself. He gave you a brain, he gave you a mind, and, he, and wisdom to know how to protect your family. You're supposed to do that. But that that you can't take care of, he'll handle if you're one of his elect. If you're not, hey, have a good trip, okay? Good sailing. Nobody tries to convert somebody, okay? Either you do or you don't. Either you see or you don't, period. And that's it. Verse 30, For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me. That's your father. I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It's not your right to judge someone. Don't you ever dare try to judge someone. They sail their own ship. What they do with it, that's their business. Okay. All you're responsible for is having the truth and the knowledge, and you stick with it. Share it when it's asked for. Don't when it's not. Okay. Plant a seed, but don't cast your pearls before swine, for they'll rend it. But um, vengeance belongs to our Father. Why? He takes care of his own. And how precious that is. Many people take this great nation and they say, wonder why we're so blessed. Well, look up. Look up and read our Constitution. It comes under that uh, uh, natural law which comes right from this word. And that's why that you can go to the border and see not so good on one side and blessed here. Why? Because God blesses this superpower of superpowers. Well, how did it get to be a superpower? God's blessings. It wasn't an accident. If you left it up to some of our leaders, whereas it is written in the great book of Isaiah, some of them have the minds of children in the end times. And so it is, unfortunately. But vengeance belongs to your father, which means what? You don't have anything to worry about. Why? He loves you. He only is angry or against the adversary, or let me put it a different way, and maybe you can understand it better. He doesn't like people messing with his children. Do you? I don't think so. I think you come pretty well up in the hair bristles if somebody abuses one of your children. Well, so it is with him. And you don't have to live very long in truth to know and understand that. Verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Uh, he has the power to destroy your soul. That's Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Don't fear somebody that can kill your little flesh body, but fear he who can cause your soul to perish. That means uh, fini. Okay. Verse 32, but call to remembrance the former days. Think about that first earth age, okay? in which after you were illuminated, when you learned the truth, you endured a great flight of afflictions. And, you know, people do kind of mock Christianity anymore. That's okay. They can mock it all they want to. That's fine. Okay. That's their problem, not yours. 33, partly whilst you were made a gazing stock, both by reproaches and afflictions, and partly whilst you became companions of them that were so used, in other words, you hold together as a family, 
For ye had compassion on me in my bounds, and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourself that you have the he, that you have hev, in heaven a better and an enduring substance. But not only that, you have God's blessings today. You know what it's called? Peace of mind. And it's called what it is. You sleep good at night. Why? He sent you this. He he created your body. And he sent you this letter of love telling you how to take care of it, how to find peace of mind, how to be happy, and what was going to happen in this world. I don't know. Have you read it? He sent it to you, and he hopes you will. I mean, have you ever written a letter of love to someone and they chunked it or put it on a shelf and kept death records in it? Might as well put your own there if you haven't read it. Verse 35, cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Be confident. You can be confident in your father. Why? He loves you. Do you know something? You, he's, he is known in the Greek tongue as the cardionor. He knows your heart, your mind. You don't even have to say it out loud. And he, he loves you, but he expects that love to be returned. And that is your reward. That's your blessings. 36, for you have need of patience. That's something a lot of people are short of. That after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. That's to say, do you, did you notice the order of events there? It says, after. Don't expect to receive the promise before. Okay. If you're a doubter, hey, just forget it, okay? You're not meant here, okay? You're outside of that scope. This is to those after you have done the will of God. That's read his letter at least. You might receive the promise. Every promise that he made. Have you ever, have you ever read the great book of Isaiah chapter 43 verse, uh, what is it, 26, where he says, hey, Remind me of my promises I made to you, and let's talk about it. Do you know why he did that? Documenting whether or not you had read the letter he sent you to know the promises. You don't talk about it, hey, forget it. They don't apply to you. You don't get it, okay? But when you talk to him about those promises, it's time to collect after, according to his will. And he always produces with patience, of course, but I want mine now. Oh, do you? Well, that's great. Father knows when you need it, okay? He's given you a brain. You can pretty well take care of daily things. Do it, okay? And he'll take care of the rest. Verse 37, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. It's going to happen. The, sand, the hourglass is tilt. 38, now the just shall live by faith. Do you understand that? Faith is believing. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. And that's just the way it is. Verse 39 to complete this chapter. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition. Do you know what a perdition is? That's apostasy, a polyon. It's, it is to um, be a reprobate, okay? That means a non-believer, okay? Infidel. We're not, and you're not, okay? But of them that believe to the saving of the soul, that means eternal life. Our Father loves His children. You know, Christ gives us an example in the great book of Luke. Um, I, you know, one of my main questions on television is, does it hurt to keep asking the same prayer as long as you don't chant? Okay. He doesn't like chanting. Why? Because that's, the body gets into it pretty quick, you know, and then you got a thing of the flesh instead of up here. But he wants you to continue asking in your daily prayer or once in the evening, once in the morning prayers, however often you pray. He wants you to remind him. Why? He's, he is the person that can bless or take away. 
most people do it to themselves. You don't have to worry about it. God doesn't have to worry about them. They, they ignore him. They, you know, they say, well, God only gives me what I can take care of. You got it. And not too many people can take care of very much. Okay. Because without faith and without understanding and without blessings, it doesn't take long for you to lose it all. Okay. A uh, little here and a little there. Kind of like... Uh, the Bible calls it a bucket with holes in it. It just all kind of seems to leak out if you don't have his blessings, okay? But he wants you to remember him and to ask. And let's go, if we may, to the great book of Luke, chapter 18. Ekdikasis in the Greek tongue means the revenger. Er, okay? In a good sense. You know, when man takes revenge, sometimes he can be very hurtful. But our father, not so. He only strikes out to protect his children. That's you. Okay. Uh, chapter 18, verse 1. Let's read it. And he spake, this was the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua, speaking... And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, what is prayer? A lot of people, you know, it's a strange thing to me. Well, where can I find a prayer I can read? That's, that is silly. Okay. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear what you have in your heart. He doesn't want, how, how would you feel if you were in love with somebody and they copied a big old love letter out of a book somewhere and sent it to you. You know, it's real tender and personal, isn't it? You know? He wants you to talk to him. Let him know what's in your heart. Okay? That's what prayer is. How can he know? And don't try to con him, all right? He already knows what you're thinking. Be honest with him. Love him, for he certainly loves you. What he's saying, pray. And most of all, don't faint. That's, you know, so many people give up. Well, it didn't happen. Oh, well, you poor soul. You know, keep working at it. Don't be a quitter. And I guarantee, if, I guarantee you, if you're a quitter, it will never happen. Okay? You're, you're just out. You give up too easy. Okay? God doesn't like a quitter. He likes somebody that will hang in there and not faint. Well, you might say, well, <laughs> what if I'm wrong? Then figure it out. Okay? You're, you're intelligent. Where did it go wrong? Fix it. And try it again. Okay. Don't lay down and cry in a ditch somewhere and stomp. What's that going to further? Nothing. Okay. It'll destroy you. Talk to him. Talk to him. But be honest in doing it because he loves you. Verse 2. This is the parable. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. He didn't care about anybody. I mean, he was so self-centered and so self-righteous that uh, you couldn't even hardly talk to him. Okay. So God wasn't even in it. Verse 3, And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. In other words, I want you to be my revenger. Well, if he doesn't care about God and people, I doubt he does it, okay? But, for, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said without, within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man. I'm not afraid of anything. Five, yet because this widow trouble with me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. You know, and that's, that's what God's saying. If you've got to take a, a judge that doesn't even care about me or know me, keep it up. Don't quit. And even, even a, an infidel will sooner or later give in to save, save themselves trouble. He says, talk to me. Well, I prayed to him once and he didn't hear me. Oh, he heard you. But he won't... Uh, he, if a child prays for a rattlesnake, he's not going to give him one because it'll hurt him, okay? Or if, maybe, well, I, I prayed for a brand new Cadillac. Well, he may have known you were going to kill yourself in it the next day. 
And besides, he gave you two hands and a brain to work and earn your own Cadillac. If you're that good, if you're Cadillac people, let's see what you got, okay? <laughs> it's, he gave you this, make it, okay? Cut it, be can do. Because God's elect are can do type people and blessed of God. Never apologize for riches when God gives them, okay? Because they're God's gift to those that follow him. So don't give up. When you talk to him, let him know and keep those prayers going, okay? And, but always, you know, you want to you put this in gear and think what you're asking. Use common sense, okay? And um, be good to him also. You know, what, you know what really helps yourself out? If you remember Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, I, where God said, I don't want your burnt offerings. I want your love. That's grace, unmerited favor. That's what I want from you. So if you're real wise, you'll let him know you love him. That pays great dividends. So like this woman talking to an infidel, don't give up, okay? Think it through and utilize wisdom and knowledge and you'll go a long, long way. Way. But he gives another little warning here that's very important. Verse 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. Did you hear that? He granted, he revenged her. 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, okay. which cried day and night unto him, Though he bear along with them, though he's got lots of patience, and it may take time. He'll pick the right time. He hears his elect. Why? They stood with him even in the first earth age. That's written. A lot of people can't read it, but it's that. Well, they could if they would. You know. and, and he finds them precious. He didn't call them elect because they're the prettiest. They earned it. And as it is written... I chose you before the foundations of this earth age. Not earth, age. This age. Why? Because you fought against Satan then and you're going to do it again. And he can trust you for it. He knows you're a can-do type person. So, he's got patience, do you? What he's saying is, don't give up. Okay? Don't quit. But here's what's most important of all. Verse 8, I tell you that... He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? That's the big question. Do you know why? Because more and more people turn away from the Word of God. Because of sometimes um, high technology can be used for many reasons. Okay. Our universities... Uh, the University of Colorado decided we need fair and balanced. We want to hire a conservative pastor. I'm, I'm sorry, a conservative professor, okay? There's not much difference, okay? And <laughs> they were looking around, and do you know something? The rest of the, rest of the faculty went bananas, okay? They really raised sand, and they're still looking, they haven't found a conservative professor yet. And, and you should, young people should hear both sides. That's what's important. Not that they should hear conservative side only, or necessarily the liberal side only. But they've got to know so they can make their own mind up, because it's, they're going to have to stand on that. And if they're not fed information, it's just like... Evolution versus creation. Now, common sense. You know, I, I've, I've done a lot of archaeology. Been in a lot of universities. A lot of artifacts, a lot of digging, a lot of looking into the past and studying the future. And it's a strange thing to me that um, you can document all these things by opening your mind up a little bit, okay, and looking and, uh, and finding, as we found in New Mexico, a footprint in stone over 50,000 years old. Okay. How could that be? Well, there were people here on earth in the first earth age, not in flesh, but they were here. And 
we're made in that exact image. Looks just the same. And, and uh, in archaeology, we find that witness that God's Word is true. And even in the very beginning, as God would write it, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, period. Didn't say when. said period. And then if you could read the Hebrew, the second sentence says, not that the earth was void and without form, it's tuhuvavuho, meaning the earth became void and without form. Why? He destroyed that age. It's so simple if you could read it to know and understand. But today we have evolution and we have creation. But for evolution to be a fact, it would have to be eternal, unending. In other words, we would have to go out here and, uh, and find Meba, which we can find, but there's still Meba, okay. And we can find people going through the monkey stage, you know, but they're monkeys. And we can find people on up as ape stage, but they're apes. Okay. And Lucy's jaw that they dug up, you know, and, the, and uh, the Neanderthal person. Guess what Lucy looked like when a paleontologist put it all together? An ape. Why? Because Lucy was an ape. Okay. In other words, for evolution to be a fact, it would have to still be going on and on and on. But they went out and built the foundation 50 feet off the ground that will not fly. Okay. And uh, whatever person, but you, a child needs to hear both sides so they can intelligently make up their own mind. So God wanted, Christ wanted to know, when I come back, will I find faith? There's plenty of artifacts in the Word itself that should strengthen faith. Many blessings of God. The very fact that this nation is a superpower should document something in someone's mind in this troubled world. You know, if you were an old combat Marine like myself and you'd been out in the boonies and tried to protect this nation where people want to, and what they want to do with it, you'd appreciate it a lot more. Okay. You really would, because it is blessed, and it's blessed by God. And you never want to take it for granted, because it can slip away. Now, if he finds faith when he returns, I can answer it for you. He's going to, because people today around the world, even in China, we have more students outside of America and Canada and, Japan and China than anywhere else. They're hungry, hungry for truth, for wisdom, for knowledge, for documentation, so that they can have their feet on a solid rock, and that rock, of course, is Christ. He prepared it. And the most important thing is that you have that faith that gives you patience, that gives you peace of mind, where you know, hey, he's taking care of me. What I, he, he expects me to handle what I can. And if you're an old combat Marine like me, I can handle a lot, okay? I don't need all that much help, but when I do, I'm glad I've got him there because he can sure take care of what I can't. And he's the one that can take a little old church in Northwest Arkansas and explode it all the way around the world where truth is taught, his word, not man's word. And I thank our Father for that. So he said, don't give up. If I were an old judge that didn't even care about anything, I would still answer your prayer if you kept it up, okay? So remember that when you have a prayer. And remember, He loves you. And He's listening. And do you know, we're in, there's a beautiful thing. In the book of Revelations in chapter 15, it says there's a song people were singing on their way to that had overcome the world, had overcome Satan, had overcome the so-called Antichrist. They were singing this song, and it's the song of Moses. You can read that in Revelation 15. But the question is, do you know where the song of Moses is? Well, of course you do. It's Deuteronomy 32. Okay, let's go there if we may. Old Testament, Deuteronomy chapter 32.
I want to document, we're not going to cover all of it, but I want to document that uh, verse 30 of chapter 31 uh, gives the title, and we have to go there to pick up the title, and Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended, okay? And he begins speaking like that, my doctrine shall drop as rain, and my speech shall distill as the dew, and on he goes, okay? But you know what he says about his elect? He says, I'm going to protect you as the apple of my eye. Do you know what the apple of the eye is? It's your pupil. And God created these bodies where in a nanosecond you blink to protect that pupil. Well, that's what he does to protect you, okay? But where I want to pick it up is with verse... Um, I want to pick it up with... Let me look where I want to pick it up. I think it was... I thought it was 26, but it's 30, okay? I want to pick it up with verse 30. All of you are familiar with this song of Moses. You've heard me teach it. But I want to reiterate again. Who is your revenger? Who can you count on? Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except their rock had sold them and the Lord had shut them up? When Father's on your side, you don't have to worry about having the victory. For their rock is not as our rock. You'll note the lower case on that rock. And Tyrus in the rock is one of Satan's names, okay? Even our enemies themselves being judges. And for those of you that don't know, Tyrus in the Hebrew tongue is rock, okay? Verse 32. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom. You know what Sodom is? That's perversion. Okay. That's what it stems into. And of the fields of Gomorrah, their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. That's what the enemy is like, okay? Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of asp. In other words, it's poisonous. It's poison to your mind. And do you know something? Garbage in, garbage out. It's according to what you listen to. I would recommend that you always make certain you listen to God's word yourself in your own privacy as much as you listen to some other kind of garbage from Gomorrah, okay? You'll be a lot better off and you'll be a lot better blessed, okay? Uh, verse 34, is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? You bet it is. And he loves to share them with his children, okay? To me belongeth vengeance. He is our revenger and recompense their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. You don't have to worry about that. This does not apply to God's election. It's to those of Sodom and Gomorrah. And they will slide. And you must, you must understand something else. Do you know what the millennium is for? There's a lot of people that have not had an opportunity to hear real truth, real t Bible teaching. And our Father loves them enough, He's not going to send them to hell just because they didn't have a chance to hear. Therefore, we have the Lord's Day. Well, well how long is the Lord's Day? Well, haven't you ever read 2 Peter chapter 3? It says, Be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years with man. It's the millennium. Okay. It's to teach some of these will even overcome. Why? Because God loves His children. Not all. There will still be some that will resist. But they will at least not do it in ignorance. Okay. 36, For the Lord shall judge His people and repent Himself for His servants when He seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. When, when you've done all you can do, He'll step in. Okay. You know something? I've seen this happen in my life in some pretty tough spots, okay? I'm not going into any detail because you don't want to hear war stories, but he's there. And, I'm, I, and I can guarantee you, when you've done all you can do, he'll step in, and there'll, there'll be things happen. 37, and he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. In other words... Uh, those, those, uh, that religion you worship, let it heal you, okay? Or that God you worship, meaning the Antichrist, let him save you. 
Well, he can't very well save them because he's going to hell, okay? Right into the pit as it's written. Verse 38, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Don't ask me. Let them protect you. Let your own imagination protect you. But don't ask God to. Okay. Why? You don't have any faith. Why should he? If you have a child that denounces you and leaves home and takes everything from you they can get and curses you, what are you going to do with them? Okay. You'll probably still love them, but you'll probably put them on packing okay, to grow up a little bit. Well, that's what our Father does. He's supernatural, more natural than we are. Okay. 39, see now that I, even I, that's two times emphatic, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. If you're in my bad side, it's awesome to fall under the hand of God. Okay, You don't want it. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. There is no other way. Okay. If I whet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. And he'll do it. Do you know what his glittering sword is? Have you ever read Revelation chapter 1, verse 15 and 16? It's Christ's two-edged sword is his tongue. It cuts both ways. Truth always cuts deep. But it heals good. Okay. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Um, that's to say, the, the enemy that would come against our people, that would make things rough for them. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge his, the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. This is his land, a part of it, and these are his people. That's why they're blessed. Why? Well, because they came here to get away from tyranny, and yet tyranny yet follows today or tries to. And there's nothing new under the sun for military people. They've tried it all along. They've never given up. But it shall always be that our Father will control. I want to go to one other place. I want to go to 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians. In the New Testament. <clears throat> Paul wrote this second letter to the Thessalonians um, because they really misunderstood his first one about the return of Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul and, and Silvanus and Timotheus, Timothy to us, unto the church of the Thessalonians in God uh, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Th those that believe. Okay? Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's to say peace of mind understanding. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity, you know what charity, that's love, your love for every one of you, all toward each other, aboundeth. That is the mark of God's elect, is compassion, to care, to really care about those that love our Heavenly Father, so that we ourselves glory in you and the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. It doesn't matter, okay? If you got God with you, it doesn't matter what people think because you're the one that's always right. And you know something I found in my life? I'm the one that always ends up with the blessings, okay? And that's kind of proof in the pudding. 
And I've seen some fall by the wayside with false teachings. What this man would say, rather than chapter by chapter from God's Word, man will take one verse and rattle hot air for an hour. doesn't matter what man has to say, it's what your father has to say. And he is your revenger. Okay. Verse 5, which is a manifest token. It's plain evidence. Let's, let's translate it properly. It's plain evidence of the righteous judgment of God that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which ye also suffer. From hearing that, it doesn't bother you. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. If people trouble you, you've done, you in kindness have done everything you can do, hey, God will take care of it. He'll fix their wagon, okay? You, you, don't, have to, you don't have to interfere in it, okay? When you've done all you can do, then turn it over to Him, okay? And, and some, so you'll have some Christians that are ignorant of God's Word that'll say, don't you understand, though, you're supposed to love your enemy? Why don't you... Love your children, too, but does it say you're supposed to chastise them or you don't love them? That's true, isn't it? Well, it's the same way. If you love your enemy, sometimes it takes a two-before, okay, for an attitude adjustment. you you got to straighten him out a little bit, okay? That's true love. That's tough love. Some people aren't hoss enough to pass that out, but then they're fakes. So be it, okay? God knows, and God takes care of his own. Verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. That time is coming, okay? But you've got to realize there's something real bad going to happen first. I really am sorry for those that haven't read the word to know what it is. Because there's another fellow and all his angels coming at the sixth trump. This doesn't happen till the seventh, okay? That's Satan and his angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a day of reckoning coming. If God loves them enough, he'll get their attention also, okay? It's called tough love. A lot of, uh, you show me a church without discipline or a family without discipline and I'll show you some failures, okay? Um, you noticed on television yesterday I had a letter from a father that said, I, I don't know whether how to discipline my son. He's on drugs. He's 16. And I said, discipline, discipline, discipline. You know, you, you become an enabler otherwise. You know, you got to hoss up. If you love somebody, don't let that kid waste his life. Step up to the plate. Okay. Let's see a home run here. And the Father will assist you in doing it. You show me somebody without discipline, and I'll show you somebody that don't amount to a hill of beans. Okay? Because there's nothing there. Okay. Verse 9. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power? Why is it written that God is a consuming fire? Because He is only... That fire, just as the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, weren't even singed. Christ was walking with them. It's the warmth of the Holy Spirit. For those that love Him, it's that comforter. And for those that don't, it, on that day, it could be kind of a flame. It burns with embarrassment. Not literally, okay? Not literally. Because it will be embarrassing. It certainly will be. And uh, when he shall come to, the glo to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. You know, God loves us because we believe and we haven't seen him. Okay? You can feel him, but you haven't seen him. And he gives you a lot of credit for that. That's called faith. And that's what he goes for. We're for also, we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work and faith with power. This, this is God's love just pouring out to those that will accept it. His blessings on those that will receive it. Or, hey, 
Go the other way. It's all right with me. Okay, that's your choice. It's your ship. You sail it. But be be a human, be a man or a woman, and be willing to take responsibility for yourself. That's all I ask. That the, to conclude to conclude the lecture, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in Him, according to the grace that's unmerited favor of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Unmerited favor means maybe, maybe we don't deserve it, but he gives it anyway. Why? Because he loves you. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for being our avenger. Thank you, Father, for looking over us. Thank you for this great nation, Father. Thank you for our troops at this time. Watch over them and guide them, and may we do that that is right always, Father, in your sight and mine. Guide, direct, and we give you the thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of The Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. And you can't judge that, though. This is why that you always, when you're of a sound mind, you want to uh, leave a, will, a living will. It's best that you do. It takes a lot of anxiety away from your family of having to decide things. Uh, if, um, for example, if, if I were to have a terminal situation, um, where um, I was in the process of dying, uh, I would not want any heroics performed. I would want to go in peace to be with the Father. And when you put that down on a living will, it takes a great weight off your family that, um, that they don't have to make those decisions of, as they say, the old dreaded statement, they're going to pull the plug Okay, well, uh, kind of pull it for them, if you will, if, if you feel that way. And if, you, if not, then make it known the other way as well, okay? It helps the family. Sue from Kentucky. I, I want to say one more word on this. Many times people, when they are given strong drugs, even though they might have dementia, and they might curse or say something that you would be shocked and know that it never would come from their mouth. Drugs can do that to a person. And so don't, don't blame that on that illness on the person. Okay. That's, that's the old drugs talking. Okay. So be careful how you handle a situation like that. Enough said. Sue from Texas. I would like to know if you have a disagreement with someone, do you have to say, I forgive in person, and can you say, God, or do you have to say, God will forgive you? I can see that English isn't your first language, and that's all right, you're doing real good, but I'm having to piece some stuff together here. Um, that God will forgive you. Thank you for being on television so we can learn from you. Thank you, Sue and David. Well, you're welcome. Um, you, you don't, you know, who you want to apologize to mainly is to the Father. Get it out of your system. But do you have to go to an individual and apologize? I, you know, I, I like to say that uh, I'm just going to come right out and say it like it is. I think some, if, if a person has been um, has a thing that they know that it would hurt an innocent person. 
really, really bad to go ask their forgiveness for a thing I think is wrong because it's a double fracture. You, you've already sinned against them a little bit and then when you lay it on them that you've been unfaithful to them or something of that nature, then that just comes crashing down upon them. So ask God's forgiveness and don't double fracture. I hope you understand what I'm saying, a double hurt to a person. So sometimes I think it's better is to ask God's, but always do ask His forgiveness because if, if you don't, He won't forgive you anymore. So you have to, you, Matthew chapter 5 and 6, okay? You have to have God's forgiveness uh, to, to go on. But you have to be the judge of that. And uh, if it is a thing that um, would make that person, if it would help them, then by all means ask their forgiveness. Let them know. But you have to determine that. And this is the beauty of Christianity. If you stop and think and use common sense, you intuitively know. That means you just automatically know right from wrong as to whether you should or shouldn't by how it will affect that person. Okay, Show compassion. Okay, we got... Um, um, who do I have here? This is... Um, um, I can't find a name on this, and it's really a sad situation. Um, just God bless your sisters. You lost both of them there, and lost them while you one while you were going to visit them. And uh, you're from uh, California, I think. Yep, yeah, California, and. Um, Sorry that happened. That's going to visit a sick sister in the hospital and have a car accident where the sister traveling with you deceased and the other sister died also. God, they're with the Father and they're in good hands and God bless you. It's, it's good that you study God's Word. He always shows us through. And um, so God bless you. God loves you. Uh, Regina, Regina from New Jersey. I have a question. Does the battle of Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16, include Gog and Magog? Because Revelation chapter 20, verses 7, 8 says, after the thousand years are up, they gather into battle. Are there two wars, one before the millennium and one after? The one after simply means the crud of the earth, okay? It does not have anything to do, uh, Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 and 8, with Haman Gog. Haman Gog is a separate battle from Armageddon. Okay. But Haman Gog and Armageddon take place at the same time. Okay. And um, in two separate parts of the country. Uh, God fights both those battles. We don't participate in them. The heathenistic world who, who denounces God does not believe there is a God. So when they move to attack us in either of these places, God says, I will take care of business because I want them to know I am God. There is a God, and they're going to find it out the hard way because he intends to rain hailstones on those armies weighing 180 pounds there won't be anything left, okay? They're going to find out there's a God, all right. At the change of bodies, that, that seventh trump, when we leave the flesh bodies, they're going to wake up in a spiritual body and wonder what happened, but they're going to see God face to face. Only he won't be happy with them. Gloria from California. Is there some way you could explain in your own words how it, to, was from the beginning all the way through until the Lord comes explaining about the earth ages. Uh, we don't understand how, how it was. Well, God bless you. No more than it's taught, I can understand that, okay? I have a tape titled The Three World Ages. I would recommend you acquire that. But just a real quick synopsis is that in the beginning, God had a perfect world, but Satan rebelled. 
He, he got so proud and he drew a third of God's children away from him. God loves his children. So rather than kill his children and Satan, he destroyed that first earth age. That's why this world is millions of years old. When the scientists can document it, it's true. And the Bible de declares it. It teaches it. That in the beginning, the, this, this katabo is what it's called in the Greek. The overthrow of Satan. And then he brought in this earth age, causing each entity. This is why God said, let us create man in our image, including himself. Because when you see Christ, you have seen him. Okay, Emmanuel, God with us. So that way, each person born innocent of woman to decide whether they're going to follow Satan or Christ or, or our Heavenly Father. That's one reason these, this book of Proverbs is ever so important, is it gives you the good and it gives you the bad. And then it's up to you to choose to make up your own mind. And I'm out of time. Hey, I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter verse by verse. But most of all, God loves you for it. It's the letter He sent to you for you to absorb, to understand. And when you do, it makes His day. And when you make His day, He's going to make yours, all right? Now, um, we are brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Won't you do that? But most of all, um, blessing God, He will always bless you. Most important thing, though, in your life is this. Now, you listen to me. Every day you're in His Word is a good day. Even with trouble, it's still a good day. Do you know why? Because Jesus, Yeshua, He is the living Word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas. 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program and God bless you.